In this video, we will start in Multicam. We'll move over to Keynote to build some of the transparent backgrounds we want to use, and then we'll go back into Multicam in order to combine the graphics and the overlays that we want to use. And we're gonna see a really professional looking product when we get done. In Multicam, we can build these with a camera attached or not. In 2.0, you always had to have your camera attached when you went into the 2.0 app in order to do anything in the app. And in Multicam, they've removed that requirement. So if your camera is somewhere else and you need to sit down and build some graphics, you can. The only thing you need is time and intelligence. And you really do need both of those. So starting the Multicam app gives this screen. If you have a camera attached and want to see how the graphics look in your view, connect to it. If not, just tap Done and go to the Pick icon on the bottom of the screen. Next, tap the blue plus and choose Graphics. Today I'm going to choose Full Screen Overlay, but the process is the same for Lower Third and Over the Shoulder. Corner Bug is different and there is no text to put in when choosing it. Adding text to a full screen overlay is as simple as tapping where it says add your text and typing what you want. If we were to build a scoreboard like we did in 2.0, we would put Elkhart on this line and Fairfield on this one. Then we would space over to where we want the score for each line. Finally, on the third line, we place the inning. Now for alignment, I'll choose left and top, then pull the opacity out of it to the level that I desire, maybe completely. I'll go ahead and change the color to white. Now we have the scoreboard we're familiar with from 2.0. It is a larger version because we used full screen overlay. If we want the smaller version like we had in 2.0, we want to be sure and use over the shoulder. It creates much smaller text for the final product. But the options in Multicam are much more than just what we've seen because of the overlays we can use if we just know how to build them or if we know someone who knows how to build them. Speaking of, patrons of this channel at the winner level get a new set of graphics every month. Some of the ones I'll show you how to build are available to patrons already. Before we get there, let's make one more version of a scoreboard that I think is more live stream friendly. Creating the old style scoreboard made it pretty large and covers a lot of the screen. If I want a smaller one, I'll need to choose the over the shoulder like I said before. Anyway, choosing the blue plus again and full screen overlay now lets us put our team names across the top of the screen. I like to go back in between them here to put the score. Experience tells me running the score across the top or even the bottom of the screen is much less intrusive than trying to place it in the corner. I'll pull the opacity out again and tap done. Take note of where this is placed on the screen. Not all the way to the top. See that gap above it? We'll need to allow for that when building our transparent overlay. Here comes step two. Now let's go over to Keynote. If you have something other than an Apple OS device, you'll need to work this process out on Photoshop or the open source comparable GIMP. Today's video will not cover those. In Keynote, choose to make a new document. For today's purpose, I'll choose a landscaped template that is in wide format. I'll delete any placeholders. Choose this plus icon and we'll add a shape. I'll start with a rectangle. If I make it about 200 wide and I center it up, it'll hold the score really well. I can now duplicate it and stretch this one for the home team. 600 should be close to right. I can duplicate and make it for the visitor team. Now each team and the score have clearly defined placeholders. They may need to be adjusted up or down, left or right. When we overlay the text we created in Multicam, 
but that's not hard to adjust. Let's color them appropriately to our home team colors and pull some of the opacity out of them. I'll also add a baseball to the center score box. These options are in the paintbrush when an item is selected. I like to make the home team box and score box the home team colors and then just let the visiting team have gray so no matter what their color is, it always works. Now let's prepare this image for exporting. With nothing selected on the slide and the paintbrush selected in the option panel, choose the background. We want to select no fill. It looks like it goes black, but I'm telling you, this is transparent. When we export it to our camera roll, it's going to look like the background is white. But if we do it right, it will be transparent. Now let's choose the ellipsis, then export and images. Pick the slide you want in slide range. If you have several that you're working on and you just want, say, two, then choose two to two for only the second slide. Then make sure we've chosen PNG and Transparent Background. Finally, tap Export and let the pop-up dialog point you to Save Image. This puts it in the camera roll where Multicam can find it. And now we're ready to go back into Multicam. These videos can be long, but hopefully they are informative. If you find them helpful, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Maybe even leave a comment regarding what you'd like to see in channel content. Okay, in Multicam, we're going to add another graphic. Blue Plus, Graphics, Full Screen Overlay. Scroll to the bottom and choose Background Image. This takes you to your camera roll, and you'll see the image you just exp exported. Select it, tap Done, and Done. Select the overlay and the overlay with the score across the top. This will let us know what adjustments are needed. You might be able to adjust the placing of the text left or right, or you may need to adjust the boxes in Keynote to fit where the text actually is. Either way, it's just repeating the previous steps to get there. Notice in Multicam, both overlays are highlighted red. Both are in use at the same time. And I haven't found a limit to the number of concurrent overlays possible. Building the base runners and outs overlays uses several at a time to show who's on base and the number of outs. I'll give a quick run through of that as well. I'm going to duplicate this slide because it already has the background taken out of it. I can remove the elements that are here. I'm going to leave this element because it's going to help me place my base runner and out graphic here next to it. This way I'll know where it needs to be in the screen in relation to the other elements that are already on the screen. I'm going to go in and look for a graphic to add. Let's search diamond. All right, there's my diamond. I'll need to go ahead and color that so I can see it. Let's make it green. We'll move it up here next to the visitor score. Now I want to duplicate that as well. I only meant to do that once. It looks like it did it twice. Duplicate that. I want to make it a white one. And then I want to make it much smaller. I want to keep the aspect ratio of it. Let's go aim for 50 by 50. I may not be able to get to 55 by 50 where it is. So let's zoom in on it. <laughs> it lacks 55. Let's move it to a different spot on the screen. Maybe I can get to 50. 50 by 50. Bring it back around. Move it into first base position. Now I'm going to duplicate that. Move it into second base position, duplicate that, and move it into third base position. 
now I have pretty close to what I want. Now that one's not where I want it, so I'm going to scoot it over a couple of clicks. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit and make sure that I am getting there. I'm not there, but I'm getting there. One more. All right, so now I have first base, second base, third base open. I need to make two placeholders for the outs. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to look for a circle. I want that circle. Oh, let's just quite there we go. We will color that. Uh, yes, I want it to be for outs. But I also want a border. I want to see where my placeholder is. I want that border to be gray so it shows up no matter what. And I want the border size to be about four points probably. Okay. Now I will resize this. Uh, 40. Mm, let's aim for 30. 30 by 30. There we go. And I'm going to go back and choose that that color be, mm, not the border, the fill. The fill color be no fill. I want that to be transparent with just a gray border. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for right there. So let's see if we can move that into place where it should be. So we'll let that one be underneath the edge lined up at the bottom and then we'll duplicate it so we have two placeholders for two possible outs it's a little bit crowded but we're going to let that work okay now i can go ahead and delete that placeholder and i want to duplicate this slide because I'm going to be pulling elements out of it to place my base runners and my outs. See, if I take, now I have this slide that has everything still on it. I'll go back and reuse that and reduplicate it. But if I'll take this one and I'll pull everything except first base out of it. And then color first base yellow. I'll have a man on first when I combine these two exports. And then if I'll go back to that slide, duplicate it again, and pull everything except second base out of it, then you see the process we're going through here. I'll be able to have a runner on second when I combine the slides that, have, that are exported, the overlays that are exported into multicam. So let's color that one yellow so that Let's us know that there's a man on second. All right, now I have three new graphics. I have my diamond and outs for my placeholder there. Then I have a man on second and a man on first. And so I want to export slides two, three, and four. So I'm going to go ellipsis, export images. Not all of them, because I already have exported the first slide. I want two through four, back to image options. PNG is selected, transparent background is selected, export, save three images. I do want all three of them. They just went to the camera roll. I can go back into multicam and choose these as transparent overlays. Now that we have our slides exported, let's go back into multicam and put them on the screen in the graphics area of the app where this pick icon is one more time we're going to add plus we're going to choose graphics and we made full screen overlays they were full sized so we'll choose full screen overlay now this time we're going down to the bottom and choosing background image we chose these three as our exports. So now we have the basis, the placeholder for the uh, base runners and outs. We'll add another one that will be 
one of our base runners. Going through the same process each time. Mm -hmm. There's one of our base runners. Done and done. I have both of those. And we'll add the other base runner as well. Done and done. So you can see that choosing or selecting or deselecting is done just by tapping on the overlay that you want to use. Then if I want to add a base runner, here's a man on first. You can see it appears there. If there's a man on first and second, we just simply go to the next one. If that runner moved from first to second, we deselect the one on first and now he's on second. The same is the same process is true of the outs and the difference between 2.0 and multicam in this particular scenario is to have all of your corner bugs show all of your possible options for base runners and outs, there were 24 graphics to build. The way it is in multicam, using overlays and combining the overlays, there are now six graphics to build. There is the diamond that is a placeholder for everything. There are three base runners that can be used in any combination and two outs. That's a total of six overlays. Makes it so much easier to find everything and even makes it faster to build what you're looking to build. Just like getting to the mute button in multicam is faster and easier than it was in 2.0. I think graphics are easier to deal with in multicam. It, it, definitely much more powerful in that you can build those overlays and then add your text in through multicam and, and have a much cleaner look to what it is you're trying to accomplish when you're live streaming sports. And the great thing about it is it's only limited by your imagination. If you've watched any of the Mevo live streams that they do on a weekly basis, they've been highlighting how to make these graphics pop and the different borders you can put around your, around your uh, area on the screen. This is another a place where Mevo has taken a huge leap forward from 2.0 to multicam. And I hope this video has been beneficial to you today.